Is there anything more important? Imagine a world where every disease can be prevented or cured. Where the three words, no known cure, are no longer spoken. This is a future we want to build together. It's about your health. It's about my health. It's about all of us. But finding a new drug for a disease is hard. The cost of drug discovery has seen a tenfold increase since the 1980s and continues to rise every year. Yet the number of new drugs discovered remains approximately constant. This is not enough. 90% of drugs are not effective for half of the people they treat. We are facing a huge scientific challenge, but there is hope. We now know that health and disease must be understood within the context of the complex interactions between molecules and their surroundings. But this approach requires the analysis and computation of infinite amounts of data. While data-driven techniques being used today for drug discovery are powerful, we already know that these alone will not be enough. Why? Because today's approaches fail to capture key aspects of molecular biology. Molecules are quantum systems. This is a quantum problem that requires a quantum solution. Quantum mechanics is so much more than just a theory. It's a completely new way of looking at the world, evolving a changing paradigm, perhaps more radical than any other in the history of human thought. And yet, nature is quantum. The building blocks of our universe are quantum. So quantum physics provides us with a model and a description of nature and therefore, quantum computers are suited to fully model it and understand it. This includes our biology, the way in which cells interact with each other inside our body. Today, I'm here to tell you how to harness the power of quantum computers for drug discovery. One of the greatest challenges in drug discovery uh, is to predict with sufficient accuracy the binding of small molecules that are potential drugs to proteins that cause diseases in our body. This is crucial to understand how drug works and eventually to cure diseases. But this is also extremely difficult to do. Today, we know how to potentially solve this long-standing problem and open a new era for medicine. Quantum computers, indeed, possess the same properties that make molecules difficult to simulate on conventional computers. They are different. They are extremely powerful. And they will revolutionize the way in which we search for new drugs. The gigantic space of molecular compounds contains 10 to the 63 molecules. This is a number similar to the number of atoms in one million solar systems. This space is currently mostly unexplored and inaccessible by conventional computers. So what can we do? Well, quantum computers will provide access to this space. And I'm going to tell you how. Today, I'm bringing to you the dawn of quantum, Aurora, our state-of-the-art drug discovery platform that combines very powerful conventional algorithms with our proprietary quantum software. This is changing the way in which medicine will work. We use quantum computers only to boost the part of the simulation that is not accessible by conventional algorithms such as machine learning or tensor network methods. Let me explain you how Aurora works. It consists of three steps. 
processing, sorry, pre-processing, processing, and post-processing. I will use an analogy to explain it to you. Imagine that you want to take the most beautiful picture. So you have to hire a studio, you position the lighting and the camera, you choose the best setting, and you buy the most expensive camera available on the market. This is the hardware for your to perform your photograph. And once the photo is taken, you send it to a retouching studio to clean it up even farther. This is exactly how Aurora is working. In pre-processing, we optimize the input for the quantum computer. This means to select that part of the chemical reaction that is impossible to simulate classically. Of course, we need to choose the language of quantum computers, so to go from molecules and electrons to qubits. In processing, we give instructions to the quantum machine to perform a given calculation. Each computation is a sequence of operations, so we need to optimize the sequence of operations to perform the calculation on the quantum hardware. Finally, in post-processing, we, we clean up the results of the previous step. Today's quantum computers are far from being ideal. They are error prone So we need to clean up the noise from the hardware in order to make the results of the computation useful. Now, of these three steps, each of them requires very complex optimization procedures. But our groundbreaking discovery is at the interface between processing and post-processing. We have indeed discovered a method to combine the outcome of quantum computers with the most powerful classical method in a way that is accurate, efficient, and scalable. This makes Aurora the only platform on the market able to use existing quantum computers to solve problems that are of relevance for drug discovery. Yesterday, we announced a partnership with IBM to achieve quantum advantage for chemistry. Many of you may think that we are still far from that point, but I'm here to tell you that this will happen sooner than you expect. We have evidence that our algorithms run on 1,000 qubit quantum computers that IBM will deploy next year will have 10 million times improvement in error reduction, 1.4 billion times speed up in runtime, and 2.4 billion times cheaper molecular simulations. Of course, the progress of any software is inevitably linked to the hardware on which it runs. So, where do we stand now? Is quantum ready to make an impact, not in 10 years, but in two? And what should we do to make this happen? So how many of you know what this is? Okay. This is a very rare, but fully functioning reproduction of the DS key, the user interface of the Apollo guidance system the computer that brought men to moon and back. Because of the long distance traveled, it was not possible to rely uh, on computers on Earth. So it was necessary to have computers on the Apollo shuttle. That computer had four kilobytes of RAM and 32 kilobytes of hard drive. Overall, 100,000 times less processing power than a modern iPhone. Because of this, Margaret Hamilton and their team of software engineers had to devise a very complex algorithm. You see it here in the picture, in order to prevent and correct all the errors. Of course, if you would have asked her, she would have preferred to have a better hardware, but she didn't have it, both because computers were at the infancy and because there was limited space in the command module. So NASA engineers, had to work together both on hardware and on software to squeeze out everything that was possible from the limited ab ability and availability of these computers. Recently, she said in an interview, looking back, we were the luckiest people in the world. There was no choice but to be pioneers, no time to be beginners. Today, we are the dreamers the explorers, 
the pioneers. Aurora is the dawn of the quantum era. Thank you.